Welcome to the Excellence in Government podcast. I'm Mark Mincelli. Today our guest is Beth McGrath, Deputy Chief Management Officer of the Department of Defense. Thanks for being here, Beth. Thank you for having me. So just wanted to start uh, kind of broadly in light of the sequester and a lot of the challenges that have been going on at DOD. Uh, how are things going over there? How are things going? Well, um, I think on any given day, we're um, not really sure what is going to sort of hit us in terms of uh, the next opportunity. As you know, the Defense Department is asked to do many things in, ad- in addition to its uh, core mission of uh, national defense. I mean, we're, we're called upon to do many things. And so uh, from a management perspective uh, and looking at um, both uh, efficiencies uh, across the, the department and um, the current fiscal constraints that we're all operating on, under, but also looking for additional you know, dollars. Um, it, it really is about, you know, optimizing what we do today, but ensuring that we've got capacity for the next thing that we may or may not be aware of. And so it really is a, a challenge to achieve the right balance of um, efficiencies, uh, ensuring effectiveness for the, the current um, activities that we have underway, uh, certainly national security mission, and then the, the business uh, and support functions that, you know, enable uh, those core missions to happen, uh, but also ensuring that we're, we're ready and that we're agile enough to, to support, um, you know, the next contingency. How have you worked to identify those efficiencies? I know um, you talk a lot about setting clear performance goals and performance measures. How does that connect with your efforts to try to identify those efficiencies in light of the budget constraints that you're under? Yeah, so efficiencies, I think, uh, as uh, actually General Whistler mentioned today, the um, they, they really started um, in earnest with uh, Secretary Gates and his, he called them efficiency initiatives, um, but, uh, but has continued since then because I think we all took a look at the, the department to say, you know, really, you know, are there opportunities? opportunities to, to better optimize. And, and so from force structure, uh, you know, the number of people, both military and civilian, to um, uh, the business area where I live and breathe every day. Uh, and I mentioned some of our fun facts, $7 billion on uh, IT in any given year. I'm thinking there's opportunity there, uh, you know, in a few thousand systems. And so it's looking at uh, strategically um, articulating where do you want to go and then ensuring that uh, you have looked at process, policy, and information technology to get you there. And so $7 billion over 2,000 systems, I mean, what is the right number? No, the right number is uh, however many we need to achieve the, the business objectives that we're aiming at. What are the strategic outcomes that we want to get to? And then what IT, what's the right IT footprint? It isn't about, you know, I want this one because I've had it so long. Um, you know, we have to peel our fingers off of that one and just let it go. Uh, but keep those things that we absolutely need. So how, when you think about uh, federal IT, particularly within the defense space, uh, how do you work with the agencies and the offices that report to you to help them identify what those outcomes are that they need to identify? The strategic uh, vision, if you will, for the Defense Department, um, our, our strategy document is the Quadrennial Defense Review uh, tied to the national strategy. Um, but from there, we also developed this thing called the Strategic Management Plan, which is the business plan which says, okay, in the business space, here's, here's how I help enable the core mission of, the, of defense, our, our national objectives. And, and uh, there's areas that, uh, you know, financial management, personnel and readiness, acquisition, technology and logistics, um, and, uh, and broadly speaking, our uh, chief information officer. And each one of those areas have, have um, strategies, you know, and, and uh, visions for, um, you know, a better financial management, both workforce, uh, uh, financial audit readiness and auditability for the department. And so we take the sort of the strategy, if you will, the business strategy, and ensure that that we then drive the IT to align to it. And so we have a, you know, uh, we've established this integrated business framework. I don't want to sound so overly mm-hmm. bureaucratic, but but it's really tie in sort of strategy again to outcome and how does the IT enable the outcome. So it's all of it tied together, and then a governance process that's really looking at 
investments as they're coming forward. And so you're asking the hard question about, well, how does your IT investment actually tie to the strategy? Can you show me? Don't just tell me, show me. Uh, not that we're all from Missouri, but uh, I think enough of us are that we want to see. And then from a business outcome perspective, you know, I mentioned the right measures. I mean, I, measures are great if they're used. If they're just there and nobody uses them, then, you know, why have them? And so you really want the right ones that measure progress. Um, you know, I, I, as I mentioned, sports analogies are my favorite. Um, but you really understand, you know, what outcome am I trying to achieve? How am I getting there? Um, and then having those same kinds of things in the, in the business space, I think, really help us understand, or are we making any progress, or are we just sort of treading? So how has the management and leadership outlook at the Department of Defense changed with the transition to Secretary Hagel now? How are things different for, for you? So I think that um, it's one thing you can count on, um, I think, in government, but in particular with the Defense Department, because our military transition um, every two to three years anyway. And so it's not um, it's something that we're potentially more accustomed to perhaps other federal agencies because our military and civilians really do work side by side. And then we have a, a rotating workforce, if you will, anyway. But certainly having different leaders come in, uh, understanding what their goals and objectives are um, is is uh, very important. And I think, you know, as I mentioned, Secretary Gates in, the in, in his initiatives, certainly Secretary Panetta with our uh, various our, um, contributions to the uh, global contingencies. I mean, that is a key focus that we have. Um, you know, ensuring the proper transition of our um, uh, military folks either to veteran status or, or um, you know, retiring and taking care of them and their families. And so there's a lot of priorities within the Defense Department, but uh, certainly our core mission and, and taking care of our people uh, remain at the top. And I think that has transcended each one of those leaders. And I think Secretary Hagel is, you know, frankly getting his arms around sort of this job that, that he has uh, so bravely stepped into to um, and assessing, you know, what what mark does he want to make? What are, you know, how does he want to lead? And, and so, um, you know, certainly, um, you know, following his uh, lead and direction. And, and Secretary Carter, you know, being part of the, uh, you know, he stayed from, the, uh, certainly from Panetta to uh, uh, to Secretary Hagel, which I think helps the department because he really is focused on the more internal operations. In the time of uncertainty that the department's in and government broadly, um, as um, a management guru, per se, uh, what advice do you have for other federal managers to um, continue on and manage successfully in this environment that we're in at the moment? So I think it's both um, uh, leadership and management uh, together, as uh, as I think I, I mentioned at the tail end of my talk about, you know, really stepping into the opportunity that sequestration and the sort of burning platform that's created by it really, really give people. And so it's, um, you know, defining strategic intent and where you want to go in addition to managing how the work gets done, so performance measures and things like that. But but I really think that um, defining what success looks like, um, and sometimes that's hard because people get so tied into the day-to-day, -day, this is what I do day-to-day. -day. Um, I think it's really important to, to really assess where are you going. And so that's the, what strategic outcome am I trying to achieve? And then um, from a measurement perspective, I mentioned, you know, have the right ones and have the right number. Um, you know, uh, I think too many is, they'll, it, it will kill all of them, even the good ones. And so, you know, I, I'd say a handful um, is, is about uh, about the right amount. And, um, and I mentioned really embracing the, uh, the current environment, the opportunities the current environment brings. I, I think people are afraid sometimes to really sort of step into uh, a new and different way of doing something. Um, and, and I really think that with the fiscal environment being the way it is, I mean, now is the time to put those new different big ideas on the table because we're all looking for them. Uh, we're looking for the next, you know, iPod. We're not looking for the next iPhone. We're looking for the next, um, you know, self-service. I think business uh, uh, in the federal government has a terrific opportunity to be more self-service. Um, you know, more touch. Uh, and, and I think that uh, in defense, uh, we, we certainly are looking for ways to, to embrace that, uh, especially in like healthcare. That's an area where we could do 
potentially more of that, but we shouldn't limit ourselves to, to that um, that area. You know, you're, you're managing your own personnel space. I mean, you could do it, you should be able to do it, certainly at home or on your smartphone, um, something like that. And so it's really, you know, pushing the federal workforce to sort of think of the next big thing um, and, and not be afraid of it. Because I really do feel that, uh, you know, people have a terrific opportunity every day to, to lead and, and they should take it. Beth, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Our guest today was Beth McGrath, Deputy Chief Management Officer of the Department of Defense. Thanks for listening to the Excellence in Government podcast. Check us out on Twitter at GovExec or on the web at GovExec.com. To subscribe, search iTunes or Stitcher for GovExec. I want to thank podcast producers Kelly Martin and Ross Gianfortuni. I'm Mark Michelli. <laughs>